Countdown to Economic Collapse. This is Countdown to Economic Collapse, September 9th, 2012. I'm David John Sponheim, running for president under America's Third Party. Well, this past week we saw the Democratic National Convention finish up with all kinds of promises. They were completely ignorant of the facts that they have not created 4.5 million jobs. In fact, we've lost jobs. The only jobs created were those under ARRA, the American Recovery and Reinvestment Act. It's not correcting the problem. The unemployment rate is still at 8.1%, still dogs our economy, and we are not seeing new innovations and new seeding of money to create jobs. Now remember the TARP money that Barack Obama and Bush were so in favor of? Well, that landed pretty much nowhere. It landed in the hands of big banks that invest overseas in companies and countries that are not related to U.S. jobs. They are essentially just outsourcing the entire economy. But at the same time, that money looks good in the stock market. The stock market seems like it's surging ahead still. Even economists are baffled by the fact that the stock market is doing well in this downturned economy. Well, all of this is let's make believe everything's okay. That's what it is. It's being staged so that Barack Obama gets reelected or Mitt Romney who is also owned and operated by the same group of people that run Barack Obama. He gets elected. Either way, the two-party system wins. Meanwhile, the American people have no one representing them. No one is standing up for the American worker. No one's standing up for the lack of jobs. No one in those two parties is really spelling out how they're going to make the jobs, how they're going to create the economic cycle that will lead to a better economy for this country. Well. At America's Third Party, we have great ideas. The Homestead Renewal Plan will kickstart about a million jobs, and we anticipate up to five million jobs all around the country, renovating homes and saving them and giving people the home ownership dream back to them so that we can all own a home and get out of this incredible personal debt that the American people are in. We drove across the country, 9,000 miles, and we recently saw tons of brand new cars and people seem to be doing really, really well. That's a surface thing. That's on the surface. When you dig deeper, you find out that a lot of them are struggling to meet their minimum payments on those cars. 85% of the new cars on the road are owned by banks, not by the people driving them. And this underbelly of real serious inflationary need is starting to pull on the economy. And that pull is the implosion. And that's not going to happen until after the election because they have the tools necessary in the Treasury and the Federal Reserve to pretend like the economy is doing well when it's not. They're able to fix the gold and the silver market. They're able to make sure that people who are investing in stocks have plenty of cash to back them up, plenty of margin call credit, and plenty of, uh, of support to invest wildly in hedge funds. And These are the people that are making money in the economy, not the average Americans. They're suffering. They're barely able to make enough money for dinner, let alone their future, let alone their children's future. So the American people have been completely shunned and not even heard by the two-party system. In fact, recently at the Democratic National Convention, there was a quorum call on a couple amendments and the no vote was clearly louder than the yes vote, yet the Democratic National Convention leaders said that the yes vote won. This is classic, undemocratic, democracy not in action in the Democratic Party. This is exactly what we warned you about at America's Third Party. We warned you that the Democratic Party wasn't democratic, they weren't listening to anybody, they don't even care what the American people really want. They're just there to get reelected and continue pushing the BS necessary to keep making money from all the corporate investors that they get. They are riding the gravy train of corporate money in our government. Most of the people in government are pretty much all about getting reelected, not helping the American people. And that is the crux of the problem. Now, after the election, we've got a fiscal cliff that's going to pretty much crash the economy. The Social Security cuts will be automatic. The cuts in the military budget will be automatic. Because the two parties have not come to any real conclusions, we are going to see an automatic cutback in disability, in Medicare and Medicaid, and nothing those two presidential candidates with the two parties say will actually make any difference at all. 
This is a problem that I think we can correct if we get a third party presidential candidate to the forefront. If we give that person an opportunity to even debate in the coming of debates between Barack Obama and Mitt Romney, that would be a wonderful opportunity to show the American people all the ways in which a third party vision for this country could actually take shape and begin sparking the economy, stimulating it, getting it back on its feet. Now, as you probably know, Mario Draga, the president of the European Central Bank, has got a lot of pressure on him to bail out Spain, Italy, and continue providing support to Greece. He is buckling under the pressure, and the European Central Bank is not giving out the money that they projected they'd be doing. Well, that's because the investors, the people that have all this money, are not going to take another hit like they did with the second rebound of bailouts for Greece. They're just not. These people are in business to make money. They're not in business to write off debt. So if he thinks that all these investors are going to continue to just pour over their, their hard-earned money in the market, that's not going to happen. These big, huge conglomerates took all this almost free money from the Federal Reserve. They are sitting on it. They want to make sure that they can handle the coming economic collapse. So they're holding on to it. Well, that is what is called a liquidity trap. And in Keynesian economics, it's the death knell of an economy. People hoarding money and getting more money. And they have the, the tools needed to siphon money out of the government simply because they own and control government officials who are bought off. You see how this whole thing kind of loops around? Well, this problem will eventually dog the economy to such an extent that even American corporate owners and leaders are going to say, hey, it's not important to stay in business, why not just fold? So then all of a sudden there'll be a mass exodus of manufacturing in this country. Well, that's happening right now. Our country is lost at manufacturing. We've cut back. Our industries have declined. And Obama has done nothing to correct that. The stake in General Motors is a joke. General Motors still can't produce competitive cars with the world market. We are still continually dogged by all these people with their fingers in the till sucking money out of our economy and out of our government. This is going to be the biggest problem facing our nation, getting back up to speed, getting ramped up to production levels that will get our country back as a competitive leader in the world economy. We're at the point, at the brink of a failure in the system. And that's something that I've been prophesizing on this show for about three years now. But the reality is the problems are getting worse and worse and the facade is getting more and more unreal. The stock market zooming past 13,200 and some odd. And now people are seriously looking for work where they can't pay their bills. They can't meet their minimums. They are being evicted. We're seeing the foreclosure market begin to tumble, the undertow is starting to suck again, and the mortgage crisis continues. All of this on the heels of an election where everything is being primped up to make look like Barack Obama is doing such a wonderful job. And the Democrats have become so oblivious to the truth, they're living in the ivory towers of academia, not really sure as to what the correct solution is. How do we correct it? Should it be another quantitative easing three? Well, unfortunately, that method, played out over and over and over again, will lead to an economic disaster for the world itself. You see, all the money and all the equity and all the leverage against the U.S., the oil dollar that we have right now, the petrol dollar, all of that will begin to become lack of confidence, lack of trust, lack of uh, hope. And then world economies will begin to pull back and recede from the dollar, and then the big collapse will occur. So I anticipate right after the election, we'll start to see the numbers really decline in the stock market like they should have about two years ago. And then we're going to start to see the oil prices increase and ramp up. An energy shortage is possible. No matter who's the president, we will not see 12 million new jobs, like the Democrats are saying. We will not see any kind of growth in the private sector. Unfortunately, even if Mitt Romney were elected, we won't see any U.S. jobs created. We will see outsourcing going on, big corporations more cash rich, but then losing their market share and eventually going under. What's happening today with companies like Best Buy? A restructuring. 
a corporate restructuring to try to cut the labor costs to make sure that they can withstand this continued economic recession slash depression, it's not going to work. No matter how hard they try to cut, they're too top heavy. Their middle management is sucking too much money out of their gov out of the corporate profit mechanism, and all of these companies are going to begin to see closures. You remember the Circuit City closure? Well, you may see it in other areas in the electronics industry. You may see it in areas that we thought were American companies are beginning to close down. Even Walmart is seeing projected losses into the future under the existing economic status that we are in today. ATP, you and me.